Okay, so on to part two. Um, one thing to note is that whenever you close Moto and reopen it, it will always reopen the way you closed it. Um, so for instance, if you were on another tab like Setup or Render and you close Moto and you open it again, it's going to take you here. Um, it's uh, it's just always going to remember the last place you were. So um, if uh, if you were in another layout or you had something else going on, um, you'll probably you know want to just make sure at the beginning that you're under the Moto layout and that your screen basically looks like mine. Um, one other thing that we want to do before we get too far into this is go up to the system and go to preferences and under preferences uh, you're going to want to go down to not quite the bottom but where it's uh, showing input and you go to units uh, just because it's intuitive for me I'm going to change the unit system to English and I'm going to change the default unit to inches and in the inch scale cutoff I'm just going to put 144 so basically anything under 12 feet will show in inches and anything over 12 feet shows in feet and inches. Um, the other thing that's important is to go hop up a few steps to where it says Wavefront I.O. So you'll see file I.O. as in input or import and out, uh, in and out, I guess. Uh, there's different file formats and the one that says Wavefront is the OBJ uh, options. So if you save out an object or a model as OBJ, you want to make sure that you save it in the same units that you're working in. So export units, I'm going to switch to inches, and import units, I'm going to switch to inches. Um, and that way, if you save something here that you've built in inches and you bring it back to Rhino, uh, it'll it'll be the correct say it'll be the correct scale. You won't have um, any strange, uh, strange things, strange things going on there. So everything else here we can leave and just close this. Um, now something else that's worth mentioning is, and I probably did this previously, but I'll demo it here because I tend to do it out of habit. Is um, if you hit the control key and push the number one, uh, you will get a pie menu. Um, so like before, control space bar is the pie menu for your views, right? And control one is the uh, viewport uh, or the uh, pie menu for other things. So for instance, right now we see the grid, right? The green, uh, the blue and the red grid, the crosshairs, and this black grid. If for some reason it disappears, you can hit control one and you can toggle grid work plane. So then it's gone. So I usually will leave this on in the beginning because I kind of consider this my floor. And then once I have a sense of my place um, uh, or object, I might I might turn it off. Um, just just so you're aware. Um, now, uh, just as a reminder, when we start out at the beginning, you'll notice that there is. Um, the untitled scene because this is a brand new scene and we have the directional light camera and what you want to remember as an empty mesh. So when, the, when it's grayed out and just says mesh that just means it's like a layer that has nothing in it. Um, so last uh, round what I was having you do is hold the shift key and when you do that you can see I just toggling shift, these little plus signs come up. And what that does is when I hold down shift and I click, it puts in one of these primitive shapes into the scene. But you'll notice it puts it in its own layer, right? Or its own item, depending on how you want to think about it. And you'll notice that this mesh layer is still grayed out. There's still nothing in it. So you can see sphere is dark in its text and mesh is, is gray. So if I click on sphere and then I click on polygons, right? I can select as I did last uh, last video. You can pick edges and so forth. Um, and if I click polygons once more, now I'm picking it 
strictly as an item, like the whole thing. I can't pick any individual piece of it. I can just pick it as one uh, one object or one layer, depending on how you want to think about it. Now, the other way to introduce these shapes or to get started is to click on this empty mesh layer. And you'll notice it goes wireframe, right? Uh, which this button will alternate that view mode. So when I'm on this empty mesh layer, that means this sphere is the background mesh, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hold shift. I'm just going to click on the cube and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to kind of alternate or rotate my view. So I'm sort of looking straight down and I'm going to left click and drag. And then I'm going to rotate and you'll notice that that square is drawn on that grid, like on the floor. And then if I grab that green cube and drag it up, now it shows um, the, uh, the third dimension. So the little colored cubes will allow you to sort of draw it out, um, size it as you want, and the move handle will let you place it. Now, there's a lot more to this, uh, and what you want to do to see that is to click this box right here that says Tool Properties. So if you click that, and then you drag this off, what you'll see is it's giving me information about this cube. Right, so I haven't I haven't dropped the tool. I haven't I haven't let go of anything. I can still move this around, and you'll notice that the size is being represented uh, there. So if I shrink this guy down, and it's only now four inches tall, um, right, and then shrink it up or raise it up, it's now forty inches tall. Uh, there's also the position. So what that means is. If where the, and I'm going to hide my sphere for a second, where the blue and the red intersect, that's the center, right? So if I was to, let's do that again. If I was to go back to that empty mesh and I click on the cube tool and I drag this out, and I raise this up about like that, you'll see that as I move this, the position changes, right? Now, if I want to, I can go in here and manually tell it, hey, be exactly center um, in X, Y, and Z. And then I can even tell it, hey, I want it to be, you know, 20 inches by 20 inches by 20 inches. Oops, by 20 inches. And let's put it back. No. So now you can see that um, I have the cube exactly in the center of the scene, and I've told it exactly what the dimension should be, and I can still manipulate this. Now, one thing that you'll notice, and you might have already figured this out, is that when I hit the space bar to drop this tool, right? So like this, I guess is, um, you know, you could think of it as the cube tool. It's making a tool. When I hit space bar, the handles go away, the tool goes away, and the tool properties go away. And what that means is that now if I click on this, I can still hit W and I can move it around, and I can hit E and rotate it, I can hit R and scale it. Um, but I no longer have the properties that I did at the very beginning. There's no way for me to, um, to bring it back to its original state other than to hit undo a bunch of times. So the thing that you want to get used to is that you need a uh, layer, you need a mesh layer, right? An empty one. You can then click on one of these primitives and the tool properties should show up. This is really important. If, if when you do this, you don't see that extra window, you want to hit the letter K or you want to click on this button and you want to make sure that this little circle is uh, solid. And that means that this will show up every time you're running the tool. And this is really important. You always, every tool that you use is going to have some amount of properties or control uh, with it and you want access to that. You don't want to have it uh, hidden over here. You won't you won't be able to use it very well. So now if I have that cube tool running, I'm going to click and drag. 
and I'm using uh, the alt and left mouse button to rotate and I'm going to extrude that up and then now you can see I can tell it exactly what size exactly where it should be and uh, we'll get into segments in a little bit but this is a one-time thing so once I hit the space bar which essentially drops the tool that property all those properties go away so now if I want to make any kind of adjustment to this you know I can still do all of these things but I have to go about it in a slightly different way so right now if I want to see how big that cube is I can click this little icon right here and it will highlight uh, the bounding box dimensions of this cube so right now you can see it's you know some random amount if I pick this polygon on top and lower it and then look again you know picking one polygon at a time or I could pick all of them it will highlight um, what those dimensions are so this little dimension uh, tool is kind of useful you can just turn it on and off right here um, but once you go past that initial uh, stage where you decide its size and location everything else is sort of like manual and you're gonna be manipulating and and, um, and controlling it from from that point um, as opposed to inputting certain numbers um, so again to repeat that if I hit the letter N as in you know new I can create another mesh layer so you can see now there's mesh 2 um, I could hit N again and now there's two more layers right so if I wanted to I can rename this layer so it's called, called mesh right now but I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna call it you know box and then I'm gonna click on this empty layer right here and I'm gonna grab the donut and uh, I'm gonna look straight down and click and drag and then I'll grab the green cube and pull it up and then sure enough there's the same properties that uh, that I used before um, and I'm gonna hit the space bar to drop it right so once I've done that I'm still on this layers right so I'm gonna call this uh, donut or donuts right and now I can just keep going I can just grab that tool again and drag this out and obviously you know you're not limited you can make a very shallow you know piece or very extended piece like a barrel it doesn't really matter and now what I've got are basically if I turn on that sphere right so I'm gonna go to box I'm gonna hit W and I'm gonna move it out of the way and so now what I have is a sphere layer right and I have a donut layer donuts because there's two and then I have the box so in each of these layers I can have as many objects as I want right so let's say that I go back to this box layer if I have this as my layer and I come over here and I grab the cylinder and I drag this out and I extrude that and then I hit spacebar and then I go over and I grab the sphere and I draw this out and I hit spacebar and I do a cone right all of these objects are on the same layer right even though it's it's just called box it's more than box it's this plus this plus this plus this right so you want to just be aware that in a sense these are layers and they can hold as many items as you want um, and within those layers are separate objects you can have as many separate objects as you want in one layer and then within those objects you can control or you can select their components right so um, I'm free to pick all the polygons in this layer but if over here I can't can't pick anything because I'm not on the donuts layer right so now I can pick donuts so this is just a quick uh, little uh, review or you know extension of what uh, the first video was talking about um, and so now I want to show one other thing before we make something for real so I'm gonna um, collapse this I'm just gonna 
click that little arrow, and then I'm going to hit Control N. And what that do, what that does, is it creates an entirely new file, a new scene altogether. So this is the first one. Now I'm going to go to the second one. And in Moto, you can have many, many files open at the same time. You don't have to go file open, file close, or any of that stuff. It'll open uh, numerous files all at once, which is really convenient. Um, so now in this uh, second scene or the second file. Uh, what I want to show is that if I'm on this empty mesh layer, when I click on the cube and I look straight down and I draw this out, you'll notice that it draws it kind of on the floor. Right Now when I rotate around, it looks like it's sitting directly on, on that grid, on that ground. If I was to do that again, if I click that cube, but this time I'm going to look kind of in this direction, it's going to draw it here. And if I did it one more time and I looked over in this direction, it's going to draw it there. So rather than like SolidWorks where you pick a plane and you say, hey, draw here, what this does is it has a plane or a work plane that follows you around. So where you're looking is where it's going to draw from. So if I'm looking straight down, it's always going to draw as if I was looking at the ground. It's not necessarily going to draw it on the ground, but it's always going to orient itself um, from that position. Okay. So uh, I'm going to close that and not save it, and I'm going to hit Control N one more time, and then now we're going to make something for real. So Hopefully, by running through this process, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable at the end. So what I want to do is I'm going to come up to um, my uh, menu here, and I'm going to click on the cylinder. I'm going to look straight down at my uh, grid, and I'm going to hold, this time I'm going to hold the control key and drag out uh, a cylinder. And it's kind of a random size. It doesn't really matter right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is, with the tool properties running, I'm going to change its position so that they all go to zero. So I could just do this one at a time. I can go zero, zero, zero. Or, if I wanted to, I could say, you know, say these are random numbers, right? I can click on this little circle and it makes it all equals. And then I hit zero and then it gang edits or zeros all of these out. It's really convenient. So then on the radius, let's do this. Let's say that x is going to be uh, 8 and z will be 8 and y will be 16. And now I'm going to zoom in. And you can see that the uh, cylinder is now zeroed out in x, y, and z and then the radius and the height and um, and all of that are, are set. So now what I'm going to do is look at this carefully and say, yeah, that seems about right. And uh, we'll come back to sides and segments. But I'm going to hit the space bar. And now that tool has been dropped and this cube, or sorry, the cylinder is now just something I can select, but I can't necessarily um, uh, you know, reach for those properties again. It's kind of, it's, it, we're, we're on our own now. So I'm going to hold down control and space bar and I'm going to go to the front view. And uh, you'll notice that when you go to any of these view specific um, positions, the grid will show up, of course, and you'll have a dark line uh, running across X and Y and Z. And then you have this kind of lighter grid these little light grid squares, and you'll notice in the bottom uh, right corner, there's, there'll be an, uh, a measurement that determines how big one of these little squares is. So right now it says two. If I zoom in, now it says one. If I zoom in more, now it says a quarter of an inch. If I zoom way out, now it's 12 inches per, per gray square. So this is just like a dynamic grid. It's always like adjusting so you can kind of get an idea of the scale you're working at. Um, for now, it doesn't really matter. What I want to do is double click on the uh, cylinder, hit the W key, and I want to move it up 
so that it's kind of sitting more or less on the ground, right? So basically, I'm just lifting it up. I'm not trying to be exact here. I'm just lifting it up until it's sitting on this darker black line. And what that does is it just kind of puts it on the on the ground. Um, okay. So now what you want to do is um, look at um, this in terms of um, its base shape, basically. Um, what we're going to make is kind of a, a picture. So um, this will kind of reveal itself in a second, I think. But what we want to do is uh, take this top polygon, hit W. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. I feel like it's a little tall. And then I'm going to hit R. And then I'm going to grab this little green disc right here, and I'm going to scale it in. Okay, like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around the bottom. And when I'm looking underneath like this, by the way, just so you know, top and bottom, if you look at the little triad on the bottom left, there's an X, Y, and Z, right? In Moto, it's just like uh, SolidWorks that Y is up. Um, so if you're ever wondering about your orientation, make sure that the Y, the green line, is facing or pointing straight up. If you ever like, you know, if you're like this, that's you're just upside down. All right. So, um, so what I want to do now is introduce kind of an interesting concept. Uh, if you hit Tab, you get this really strange shape. It's not smooth at all. It looks really weird. There's all these like striations. Uh, it it looks like you know some kind of uh, really ugly vegetable or something. So hitting the Tab key will toggle you. Uh, between these two modes, and um, the reason it's looking so strange is because of the number of sides on each polygon, right? So if you remember from earlier in the term, when we're dealing with SolidWorks surfacing or surfacing in any program, really, uh, four sides are an ideal number for any particular surface. So right now, if I have this one polygon selected, you can see if I go to edge mode, there would be four sides, right? And then the next one is one, two, three, four, and four, and four, and four. So it keeps going around. But if I double click on this top polygon, right, this one up here, and I change to edge mode, you'll see there's actually 24 edges, right? So just this one polygon has 24 edges. And so when I hit tab, it can't smooth it out. It looks like a tent or it looks, it looks really strange. It doesn't, doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that top polygon. And notice it looks hollow or empty or invisible, right? Polygons will only show from one side. So in SolidWorks and Rhino, we have double-sided shading turned on all the time, so you can see both sides. But in actuality, uh, all um, surfaces in uh, digital modeling technically only have one true side. Okay, so now if you hit Tab, only the bottom gets weird, and the top stays tight. Right? There's nothing for that algorithm to do because there's no polygon up here. Right? But the bottom still looks really bad, it looks really messed up. So what we're going to do is use a tool that will seem rather strange at first, but it's quite effective. So in fact, I'm going to rotate um, so that I'm upside down for a minute so you can see this. And with that one polygon selected, I'm going to hit the letter B. B is in boy, right? And when I do that, these handles will show up. There's a blue and a red. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red handle and I'm going to drag it inward. And then I'm going to take the blue handle and I'm going to lift it just a little bit like this. Okay. And then I'm going to hit the space bar, which drops the tool. And then I'm going to hit the space bar again, which drops the selection. Okay. So what did that do? Well, it moved this polygon 
which has 24 edges, it moved it away from this outer edge, right? So now if I hit the space bar, it's not nearly as bad. It doesn't look, it still looks pretty bad here, but when you look at it from this angle, it doesn't look quite so bad. So now let's do it one more time. Grab that middle polygon, hit B, and then bring that edge in and then move the blue handle just a little bit and then let's do it one more time so I hit spacebar the tool goes away now I'm gonna hit B again and I'm gonna move that polygon in and move it up just a little bit and I'm gonna hit spacebar and now what I've done is I've taken this n-gon that's what they'll refer it to as an n-gon because it has some number of sides that is more than four, maybe sometimes less than four. But this 24-sided uh, surface is no longer near this outer edge where it's kind of going to roll over. So now when I hit tab, you'll notice it's a lot smoother, right? Because only this polygon right here, this is this is the, the bad guy, this um, is now much smaller and it's in a pretty flat area. So this area where it was rolling over wasn't flat. So there was this kind of like stretching or weirdness happening. happening. But um, ingons or, or faces that have more than four sides can be just fine as long as they are away from this edge. Okay. So um, now that uh, we've done that, we can always hit tab and uh, bring it back into cage mode, right? And um, just, you know, toggling that around. And one thing you'll notice too is if you go into edge mode and double click this edge, right, to get that whole loop, if I hit W, I can move it up and move it down and you can see I can kind of change the shape of this um, this vase or this picture that we're making. So if I move this up, right, I can, uh, I can control its shape and the reason that I can do that is because of where this edge is in relation to these other edges. So you can see now if I do this in cage mode, maybe it's a little easier to see. If I move this up, it's kind of like that or that or that, you know, it's whatever. And I can always hit the scale tool and I can grab that little disc and I could scale it like that. And then when I hit the tab key, I get, I get this more inverted shape, right? So, we're going to come back and look at edges in, uh, in greater detail, but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this back to about there. And then I want to actually add, um, I'm going to make this so that we can, you know, use it as a, like an actual pitcher for, for liquid or something like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to add some more geometry to this. Um, and just as a little side note, what I was talking about earlier, you don't have to necessarily do this part, but if I made myself a cube, you'll see that there are segments, right? What this is, is if I increase segments, it's sort of dividing up the uh, cube into um, additional polygons. So it's giving me more polygons to create this cube. And uh, if you remember from uh, Unreal, um, if, if you've taken that, there's advantages to being able to control how dense a, uh, an object is, um, right? So um, that's what the segments do, is it, is it, it divides up the uh, surfaces into a greater number of polygons. Now, this is great because it'll allow you to get in there and sort of have much finer detail um, you know, like if, if I dragged out uh, something like this and just moved that up, right, you can start to see I can get all kinds of uh, 
um, information um, when I have more polygons, right? But over here, I don't have any. I don't. I don't have much to work with. So there's a way to introduce more segments, and it's going to be something you do a lot. And uh, this is how it works: is you go into edge mode, pick an edge, and then you're going to hit the command Alt C. And as soon as you do that, this tool properties should show up. If it doesn't, make sure you hit the letter K and make sure you make that a little solid circle. And you'll notice that in this property now there's a count area, which I can increase the number of segments or the, what they call the number of loops going around. So the purple line is, is representing the number of loops. And you can see this tool is actually called loop slice. So I'm basically slicing the object with a series of loops. And now where it says the mode, I'm going to change that from free to uniform. And what that does is it just means that it's going to divide up this space equally. So I'm going to change the count to eight. And I'm going to hit spacebar, which drops the tool. And it's still being selected, so I'm going to hit spacebar one more time and then click and then now it's dropped the tool so when I um, hit tab it doesn't have as smooth a surface or it kind of is still fairly rounded here but then it gets very straight and that's because of the number of edges okay so if I wanted to um, I could uh, always double click an edge and delete it if I wanted to I don't necessarily need it or I can click an edge, hit Alt C. This time I'll bring it back to one, and I can put that edge back. Okay. So modeling in Moto is very much like um, the way I think about it is sort of like when you get used to it. It's kind of like sketching with a pencil. You know, you've got an eraser. Think of SolidWorks as more like working with a pen, no eraser. But in Moto, it very much has that. So I could delete all of those, and then I can just bring them back. Right? So I'm going to say let's do a count of seven, keep it uniform, and we're good. Okay. And uh, now what I'm going to do is give myself kind of a like a little pour spout, something to pour my, uh, my liquid out, I guess. So now if I look at the uh, blue and the uh, red um, uh, lines, this is going to tell me which way I'm actually um, moving in space, right? So if I go to polygon mode, I'm going to pick these four polygons right there. And I want this to kind of tip forward and sort of act like a pour spout. So if I go to the uh, front view and I hit the E key, E is for rotate. You'll see the properties right here. What I can do is uh, first notice that the rotation handle, or the tool handle, will always go to the center of what you've selected, right? So if I rotate this, cool, that's tipping out the pore spout, but it's kind of caved in the bottom part, right? So I've got this nice smooth kind of transition. That's cool because that was like really, really easy. But it's kind of messed up the surface. So what I want to do is look at um, a really interesting quality of these transform tools. So you'll notice that if I hit W, the handle kind of goes to the middle. Whatever I've selected, it goes to the middle. Same with rotate and same with scale, right? But What's interesting about the tool handles is that when I left click, I can move them around, right? So what's going to be to my advantage is I'm going to put my mouse down here at the bottom of this uh, selection. I'm going to click right there. And now when I rotate, it moves the polygons out. It rotates them out, but it doesn't kick in the, uh, the bottom, right? So when I move to uh, perspective, you can see now I've given myself kind of a pore spout um, for my uh, my carafe or my uh, wine pitcher, whatever it may be. Okay, so that's good. Now I just need to give it some thickness. 
Well, that's an easy one. All I need to do is go to the Polygon tab, and then there's a button right here that says Thicken. So one thing to notice is, or one thing to remember, along with everything else, is that if you have nothing selected, that means everything is selected. So I'm in Polygon mode, and I'm not picking anything. I don't have this. I don't need to do that. I just have nothing selected. I'm going to hit Thicken. And then I'm going to come out here and you see the properties, but you don't see any tool, like nothing's happened. Well, you want to left click anywhere. Just click once. And now the handles show up. So what I'm going to do is take the blue handle and I'm going to drag it inward just a little bit. Okay. And now I've given myself some thickness. So I'm going to hit the space bar. Oh, and by the way, the tool properties will let you offset it exactly the amount that you want. Okay. So when I drop this and uh, I look around, you know, it's cool if I hit tab, kind of see what, what's happened, right? Everything still looks, you know, very straight edged and I've drawn out this kind of pore spout and so forth. I can hit tab. And, and by the way, sometimes what happens by accident is if you have a if you have a polygon picked and you hit tab, it does that. Right? And you're like, hey, that just broke off. Like now there's a hole, right? And if you hit tab, it alternates. It's like, wait a minute, what happened? There's like now a square and everything else is smooth, right? And so you're sort of trapped. So if you ever accidentally do that, just pick the one that's different, hit tab and then let it go and now everything's the same and when you hit hit the tab key everything will smooth together or go straight together okay. all right so um, what we're noticing now is we've got this cool shape and I'm, I'm willing to bet that if any of you had to model this in SolidWorks it would take you a lot longer than it just did right now right um, pretty pretty sophisticated kind of form when you think about it. I mean, this would involve like lofting and blending and making sure everything looks good. Um, and we just did it in a matter of seconds. Now, the one sort of downside that people sort of run into pretty quickly is they're like, oh, cool, it's like really smooth and that's awesome, it's just automatic. But then you're like, wait a minute, that's too smooth. Like, I don't want it to look like chewing gum. I want it to look I want to have a little more control over this. So the way to gain control is to add more edges. So let's say that we want this top rim to not be so rounded, right? Right now it's super, it's super round. And um, I want it to be less so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same tool we did a minute ago. I'm going to have edges selected. I'm going to pick one edge and I'm going to hit Alt-C. And it's going to run these loop slices around the geometry, right? And there's way more here than I need. I'm actually going to take this down to two. I'm going to change the mode to symmetry. And when I left click, that means I can kind of move them in and out from one another, right? So what I'm going to do is move them out to about, I don't know, 10%. You can see up here in the little top left. And now I'm going to hit space bar. So you can see the selection is still there. I hit the space bar again, click and drop. And when I hit tab, you can see now that top edge is a lot flatter. There's a lot more of a flat surface to this uh, edge. And then it has like this kind of slow fillet to it. So we'll revisit that some more, but that's one way to kind of control the form uh, on that edge. Okay. Now, when I look at this, I go back to front view. You can kind of see that when we rotated this out, it sort of lifted, lifted these polygons up here. It's not, it's not so flat. So what I want to do is um, I want to flatten that out. So I could do this a bunch of different ways, but what I'm going to do is just really quickly go into vertice mode, and I'm going to pick these two and go to the front view. I'm going to hit W. I'm just going to move them down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab all of these. So I'll pick this one, this one, this one, this one. 
this one and this one. Okay, those. And I'll go to the front view again. Hit W. And I'm going to move those down like this. Okay. And then when I hit Tab and I go to the front, you'll see it's a lot smoother. Not exact, but we're not worried about that right now. Okay. So that's cool. Now what I want to do is spin around and I want to put a handle on this. So I'm going to go back to the Create tab right here. Uh, actually, that wasn't necessary, but I'm going to go to Polygons. I'm going to pick these two polygons and I'm going to hit the B key again. Remember B for bevel. And it sounds funny, I suppose, but this is a tool you will use over and over again. Um, so B for bevel, and we're going to grab the blue handle and just drag it out a little bit. Not much. And then hit space bar. And then now what I want you to do is hit shift X and click. And then grab that handle and move that out a lot. Okay. Now, when you move that out a lot, you're going to get this sort of pointy, it's like spike almost. It's really stretching. And uh, what's happening is that we are running into the same problem here that we originally had on the bottom of our uh, picture. It was really stretched and looked really, really bad. That's because it didn't have enough edges. So. Let's look at this carefully because this is a great thing to understand is that if I go into edge mode and I pick this edge and I hit Alt C, notice it immediately changes. And the reason is because now I've put another edge near these edges over here. So another way to look at this, if I undo that, if I hit tab right now, everything looks straight, right? Notice how there is this edge really, really close to these edges, right? So from here to here, there's not a lot of distance. But from here to here, there is a lot of distance, right? So there's nothing here. So when I hit Tab, it looks like this. But if I pick this edge and I go Alt-C, and let's just change this to Free, and I'm going to change the count to 1, I can move this with my left mouse and just slide it around. And if I slide it towards the end down here, so it's really, really close, and I hit spacebar, and I then hit tab, see how it stays kind of flat. That's because this edge is controlling how round that uh, is at the end of the handle, right? So I'm just going to leave it, you know, about there. We're not going for anything super particular right now. Um, but what I want to do is I want to have this handle come out, and I want to have it bend around and join back into the into the uh, picture. So uh, at this point, I'm going to hit Tab to go back into regular cage mode or face mode, and I'm going to pick that edge and. In order for me to bend this, I need a lot more polygons. I can't just get away with uh, with one big long one. I, there's no, there's not enough information there for me to bend it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this edge. I'm going to hit Alt C one more time. I'm going to change this to uniform, and I'm going to put in, let's say, just ten edges, and I'm going to hit space bar and drop it. Okay, so now what I want to do is bend this handle around, and uh, what that means is I have to select these polygons. I have to go in, and now what I could do is pick this, hold shift, keep clicking, click, 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 you know, take forever to do that. I could middle mouse and do that, right, or I could pick these two on the end. And I could do, I could hold down the shift key and use the up arrow. And it will expand the selection. And the down arrow will shrink the selection. So this is a convenient way to kind of select things, right? You just pick, pick the end of something and shift up arrow. And I'm going to pick, say, 
Yeah, that much. Maybe I'll do one more. Go there. Now I'm going to go to the front view. And I'm going to use a new tool that is the bend tool. So if I go to deform and I look right here, there's the bend tool and there's a hotkey for it, control E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hotkey. I'll go control E. You see the tool properties come up. The bend uh, tool is highlighted right here. And what I'm going to do is put my mouse right under this handle, right at the end of it, and click. And now what I've got is this blue circle and this purple line. So this is a weird tool to, to, to learn. It's easy, but it just takes a little getting used to. And uh, the first thing is that this purple arrow, you can click the end of it and drag it anywhere. right? And I'll come back to that, but I'm going to drag it so it's a little bit longer than my handle. Then I'm going to grab this blue circle and treat it like a steering wheel. And you can see I can kind of just rotate that around. I can go either way. It takes a little, you know, getting used to and really cheap mice. Your computer mouse, if it's a piece of junk, it, you're going to know it right away with this tool. So I'm going to bend this around, but I don't have to stop there. Um, I can still actually move the center of the circle, right? So I could do all kinds of ridiculous stuff. And what I'm going to do is just kind of move it until it's about right here. I'm looking to kind of line up with these polygons right there, right? Now this uh, purple handle right here, what this is, is it has to do with where the rotation actually starts. So let's say that I move this in right here and then I rotate, you'll notice that all of this stays straight and only this part bends, right? So I could do something like that, which is kind of nice. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is drag this back out, and then I'm going to roll this around and stop maybe about there, and then I'll just move it up like that, okay? So I'm just going back into perspective to look at it. I don't have to actually... Um, uh, drop the tool. I can keep using it um, right now um, and I can kind of, you know, do whatever. But uh, that looks good to me. So I'm going to hit the space bar and then I'm going to click and now everything is deselected. So if I hit tab, now I have this, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the handle back into this body. Okay. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pick these two polygons and I'm going to pick these two polygons. And the tool that I'm going to use, and this is another tool you will use a lot, is if I go to the polygon tab, I'm going to hit this bridge button. So if I click here, the properties show up but nothing's happened yet. Properties are up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out into the viewport and I'm gonna click. And that's gonna activate the tool. And now these have bridged together, right? So if I hit the space bar, the tool is dropped and we're good. So now I have um, my picture. Now, again, when you look at this, you're like, wait a minute, the, you know, the, the shape is not quite the same as it is up here. Well, that has to do with these edges, right? So if I pick that edge, if I was to delete it, notice how it kind of smooths out even more. If I deleted this one, notice how it smooths out even more. And there's kind of a, some, well, we'll revisit this soon enough, but there's this thing that's happening right here, and it doesn't look as smooth right there as it does everywhere else, right? So these are referred to as spiders, um, and we'll get, we'll get involved with that a little bit more later. But if you wanted to see what happens, go ahead and pick these guys and delete them, and then you'll get like a really crazy uh, transition. It's a lot, a lot more stretched out, right? So um, this is just something to experiment with. Um, and uh, don't forget, you know, you can go in and um, let's say I lasso select 
those polygons, I can then hit shift up arrow, kind of expands, right? And if I wanted my handle to be a little bit thinner, I could go to deform and I could choose uh, push and I could just left click and kind of shrink that handle down until it's a little bit skinnier, um, which looks a little bit nicer. And then if I need to smooth that out, I could always add in more loop slices. So I'll put in a count of one. I'll change the mode to free and I'll just slide it around until I kind of like, you know, the result that I get. And there's a lot more to it. We can we can make this just really, really blend incredibly well. But um, I think at this point, this is where just about where I want to stop. So what I would like everybody to do for homework is to follow this video and to make their own picture and to experiment. Don't just don't just make this exactly as it is. You know, I'd like to see you uh, mess around. Right. So like if, for instance, if I went to the front view and I use the middle mouse and I lasso selected um, that section, right, I can always hit the R key. I could scale this in or bulge that out. You know, there's all kinds of possibilities. Um, I could uh, run the bend tool on the whole thing, right? If I click the bend tool and click right here, I could move this up and I could, you know, bend the picture, right, itself. So maybe that would be kind of a, an option. Um, or you could lower this and, you know, manipulate things that way. So a um, number of things to kind of experiment with. But um, for homework for next week, what I'd like to do is have everybody make a bunch of uh, different objects kind of along the lines of tableware, right? So for instance, if I wanted to make a cup, I would sort of follow the same logic, right? I could draw out a cube, I mean a cylinder, I can rotate it on Y. Now I could actually add more segments right from the beginning if I want, now that I know what's going on, right? I could go to the front view, double click, move these up to sit on the ground, move this guy up by the way. Right. This cup's a little big, so I'm going to hit R and I'm going to grab this disc and shrink it down. I'm going to delete the top, go around to the bottom. Remember, B for bevel, bevel it in, move the blue, maybe grab it again, bevel it one more time, drop it. And now when I hit tab, you can see it's a nice little cup, right? And what if I wanted to kind of flare it out, right? So I could delete these edges and grab this top one. I could then scale it like this, right? And then I could take this, go to polygon, thicken, click, Move the blue handle in, right? There's my cup. Now you'll notice that this one is smooth and this one's not. If I hit tab, they keep trading places, right? So if you see that happen, just double click on the one that's not smooth, hit tab, and now they're the same. So now they alternate back and forth, okay? And then if I wanted to finish this off, all I have to do is hold the shift key make a plane, hit R, scale it up, and then if I want to hit F8, that is the uh, preview render. So now I can kind of look at what I'm going to be getting soon enough. And there's a million more things beyond this, but this is a good place to stop. So I'll be making another video soon enough, but if you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, but for next week, I'd like to see everybody just experiment, make some plates, make some pictures, make some cups, mess around. See you next time.